Hey, what's up everybody? It's Omar from the Bullish Bears team, otherwise known as Watch Your Tree. Um, please, um, I belong to this to the community Bullish Bears. It's on Facebook. We have about 7,800 members. We keep growing. It's a fantastic group. Um, all the content we provide currently is free. It's donation based. So the owners are Lucian, Tim, and Dan. They would most uh, you know appreciate a donation if possible. They have a website. Uh, bullishbears.com okay so if you go to bullishbears www.bullishbears.com you go to courses you can learn how to trade options they have an options course that's free i think a swim course a stock trading course and then a momentum trade course which is my course okay i have a youtube page all right which is watch or trade please subscribe like the videos make comments um and there's also a bullish bears YouTube page where you where most of my information is linked to. Okay, they have twenty eight hundred subscribers continuing to grow. But honestly I want to grow my my own as well. So please subscribe to my um I only have right now two hundred thirty five subscribers. It's more than yesterday. That's good. So it's continuing to grow. I never really pushed it but I'm gonna start really pushing it to grow it. So um with that said I'm gonna talk about my plays for today. Um alright so one of the plays, um, let me go here. So my first play today was SDRL, <clears throat> all right? So these are my scanners that I've set up. If you watch my videos, I have, I have a video that exclusively teaches you how to sell this up on Think or Swim. And what you're gonna notice here is that, you know, before the market over today, I was actually able to get in through the firewall, which is fantastic. And I was looking to, you know, see which plays were happening. I know that C-Drill, um, I saw on um, um, on one of the news sites that it had beat estimates by five cents and oils up. So I thought that today this would be you know a good stock to trade potentially. So when I saw this pre market, look what I did. I took this is very important. You put a uh, can so you put a trend line, the high and low of pre market, so you know what your range is when the mar when the market opens. And when the market opened, this stock immediately panicked. So you see that in that one minute candle, two minute candle, it, it opened up at 66 cents. The next candle hit a high of 67, and then it started collapsing. So you could have took the short immediately once it broke below the um, previous day's close. Let me set this up. I don't think I have it here. Uh, let's do, uh, give me one second, folks. Uh, yeah, so I don't see it. That's interesting. Okay, here it is. That's the previous day's close. So yeah, so once it broke below, this would have been the the actual. If we look at the pre market, that's the low of pre market. You could have actually took this short, risking the sixty five cents, and you know took this down. And then you see how it panicked. It kind of dipped. It kind of bounced here, right here. You could have took this is the lower high, and you could have actually took another short if you wanted to short it, which I didn't. I didn't. I didn't short it. I just bought the dip. Um. I couldn't get shares to short, so it um you know it continued to panic, and you see you got another lower high here. You could have took another short if you missed this entry, and just kept taking it down. Now, this is a question I get all the time about buying dips. Like Omar, when do you know the reversal is taking place? All right, so this is how. I, well, you never truly know that a reversal is gonna fully take place, but you 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 can figure out your risk. So look what happens, right? Let me move. Sorry guys, uh, remove joint. Okay, so right, it continues to sell off. Now look at the volume bars, right? And what you do is you're looking at the volume bars, you're looking at the time it sells. You're gonna see a lot of red print. You're gonna look at level two. You're gonna see that there's gonna be more sellers than buyers. And so the buyers, because they're more sellers than they are buyers, the price of the stock is gonna go down. The bidders are gonna have to drop their price, and the stock continues to go down, right? So, <clears throat> so you're watching it go down. But you're really focusing on the volume bar. I mean, the indicators, you see the RSI rolling and it's below that 30 level, which means that the stock has been overbought and is due for a bounce. You see the MACD, you see when the red is over the green and you see the spacing, that that's indicator of a, a huge amount of selling pressure. All right, that means it's very bearish. Also, the TTM squeeze is all red. So that's all indicators of selling pressure. But what matters more than anything else is you see the volume bars and you see that they're all red. 
right? And you see you have this little bit of buying here, but what happens in the next candle, more than one minute candle, more sudden pressure, which means that the price of that stock is going to continue to go down. So then it falls down all the way down to 59 cents. Now, this is what happens. At this point, I start seeing the volume come in. I start seeing buyers come in. I start seeing green prints come in, right? And then in the next candle, I see that there's less sellers than there were more buyers in that minute. So I put my, this is what I did. So I, I put my trend line here knowing that this is now seems to be support. The next candle, you see it's kind of holding its support level there. So I'm like, okay, this is my risk, 59 and a half cents. So right here is when I went in. I think 10,000 shares I got. And I went in um, and I just rolled the bad boy up. I just watched the volume, okay, looked at the, the trend and it was going in this trend and you can see it you know starts gapping up it starts getting more volume more buyers and sellers okay and let me just zoom out a bit <clears throat> and you see it starts gapping up and then it pulls back and you don't really know if it's gonna sell off but what I kept what kept me comfortable with it was well you're hoping that it's gonna fill the gap one you know that oil is up too and it's forming lower high so let me remove this trend line if you notice, oops, sorry about this. Uh, remove trend line. Oops, remove trend line. Let me go over the drawing. I'm still getting used to this. Sorry, guys. So if you notice, look what's happening. It's forming lower highs. See? I mean, higher lows. Higher low, higher low, higher low. You see? It keeps forming higher lows as it goes. So if you notice this trend, it's just forming higher lows. So that's giving me the confidence to know that the stock is going to continue to go up higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So that because of that, and it went above VWAP, which is one of my um, strategies. You know, when a stock goes above VWAP, you can use VWAP now. It plays um, as support. So this gave me the confidence to stay in the stock. And I actually posted it to the group before it even peaked at 67. I, I posted it like right around, right over here. I think I posted it. Uh, I don't know. I have it somewhere in here. Let me see. I don't know what what, what price it was when I when I uh, posted it. Let's see. I'll find. Yeah, it was at uh, 65 cents when I posted this stock. All right. It still hadn't peaked yet. Okay. So at that point, um, <clears throat> you know, so this around here, this point, I had posted it. Um, and, you know, I was confident because now it's above the 9 and 20 EMA. Look at all the volume. A lot more volume, but not a lot of people are selling. So that tells you, okay, that means there's more buyers and sellers, and I'm good. Um, and for me, my goal was to fill the gap. So you notice this is where it started selling off. So I'm looking at at least $0.67 cents for it to go before it pulls back. Now, this could have been an amazing short, but I just couldn't find the shares to short, unfortunately. But, um, but what happened was, so once I saw... It break here, which was the low of pre-market. I got out, and because I, I felt, I felt like, all right, at this point, even though you got a lot more volume, that it was gonna peak and it was gonna reverse, and it was forming this head and shoulders pattern. I, once I saw this, I knew that there was a reverse was gonna come because this looked like a shoulder forming, and then you notice you get the head. I remember you get that little wick right here. Let me remove join, and then once you see that high day, and then it comes down, forms the other shoulder. And then it collapsed. That's a head and shoulders pattern. That's a bear sign. And then the stock just gave back all its gains. And it could have been a tremendous short. So I got out just before the top, which was great. Um, and I made about 600 bucks. So, you know, it was a, it was a, 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 a great trade for me. Um, <clears throat> all right. So that was my first play. So, you know, buy dips. And you see the risk reward is fantastic when you buy dips. All right, the second trade I took today was another dip buy, which was AKS. So I saw that AKS was selling all day. And if you notice here, this actually was a fantastic short opportunity, which I didn't take, um, which was ridiculous of me, because I saw this gap. Um, and, you know, you see this run here. So, you know, it goes up, pulls back. That's the bull flag. So you get that push, gap up, pull back. See how it's pulling back to the 9 and 20 EMA? Once it touches that, that trade is known to buy the bounce, and they and they bought in here, and they and they just went above. Now, that six twenty is. Let me just zoom out so you can see. This was um, the range that the stock was in yesterday. I guess I had this up on yesterday. I don't know, but 
then the stock gaps up. And you see, as long as it, let me move that. As, uh, as long as it stayed above the 9 and 20 EMA, you could have stood this, you could have stood it in this. Now, if you want to have another indicator to help you, just put a trend line. And just know, as long as the stock rides the trend, you stay in the stock. But what you could have done, right, you use my shorting strategy, which I didn't short, and I want to kill myself for that. I just w didn't have the time to watch it because I was working. But this was perfect short because look what happened. Right here, this point's high a day. Now, theoretically, right here, at once this was high a day, right, you could have took your first short entry. Now, if you're under the PTT rule, obviously, you can't do all these trades. But, but if you're over the PTT rule, then you can't. Now, right here, theoretically, this was high a day. And right here forms the lower high. Right here, I would have I shorted this, risking that one cent and just took this bad boy down all the way down and covered somewhere in here. Because, look, it happened again. And really what it was forming was a head and shoulders pattern. And right here, so let's say you missed that first opportunity, right, so I'll remove those. Right here, there's that wick that you see high a day, right? It bounces, it forms this lower high right here, 633. And right here, you could have took a short entry, risk, risking the high a day because, and the reason why you get confident knowing that is because, look, you get that selling pressure, you're seeing all the, the volume bars go red. That's how you know that it's going to be a wash. And this thing washed. Now, remember, anytime you get a wash, you're going to get a bounce. You don't know how big the bounce is going to be, but you're going to get a bounce. So, you know, I, I, um, when I saw, I saw this um, selling uh, somewhere around here, and I just watched it. I just kept going back and forth and watching it, watching it, watching it, looking for an opportunity to get in. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I just kept watching it sell off. I wasn't comfortable buying these bounces um, here because I didn't, I just thought it was going to continue to, to sell off, to be quite honest with you. And I just saw that it was a lot of volume, selling volume, and it just kept going, 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 going. And then it found its support right here at 584. And, and one of the things that you know when there's going to be a reversal, you're going to get one of these wicks. Just like you get a wick at the high of day when there's going to be, let me remove this. Enjoying sets, whatever. Right. You see how you usually get a wick when there's a high day and a trend reversal? The same thing happens when a dip. You usually get one of these wicks that tell you that it's an indecision candle, it's gonna about to be a reversal. Doesn't always happen, but but it's a good indicator. So when I saw this, uh I I look I watched the stock and and um you know I saw it starting to make the trend. Now I didn't know it was gonna hold, but I see that you know in these candles all are green and I start seeing the volume come in. So once I saw that right in this candle, right at eight at five ninety, I got in, you know, risking five cents, okay, and I just rolled this bad boy up because you know what I saw was oh, I hate this. Um, let me try it. What I saw was um, was it? It was forming higher low. So you see, higher low, right? Higher low. I kept. I saw it form the higher low and. This thing for a second touched six bucks, but I got once I saw it do that and pull back. This is where I, I stopped out. So I, I got out at like 598. So I made about I think it was 598. So I made roughly eight cents, but um, you know, I had I had 5,000 shares, so I did all right. Okay, so you know, and then it kind of came back down, it came back up, it actually broke six dollars. Um, but I didn't even look at it at that point, I took my money and ran. All right. So then I went about my business and then what they call power hours between three and four. And for those of you that, you know, have my manual and see my videos, I have a shorting stock strategy that I love between three and four. It's called a late, you know, what I call the late day fade. And uh, let's see if we can put it up here. So NBCR was one of those stocks that I caught. Um, so let's put up NBCR. And you're going to notice that Usually when a stock has a rip like this, where it's running slowly all day, you're going to get, at some point, you're going to get a reversal, all right? You're going to get a reversal. So I caught this um, in, at around, I want to say, yeah, right around here, it was 12.50, because I was at lunch, and then I came back to my desk, and I caught it, let me show you, well, I want to see something cross, let me see. Yeah, because this was, yeah, this was around the time I was closing. Yeah, so, so I caught it. Uh, 
I want to say that, you know, so right here is the high of day, all right? And there wasn't a lot of volume in this stock. And I didn't, and I didn't take a, a huge, huge position on it because there wasn't a lot of value. But I saw it, so right here, now theoretically, if you was watching this and you see the lower highs forming right here, you could have, but there was no volume. There was like really no reason to trade this. But around, I want to say it was around, yeah, right around, right around here is where I started, I saw the stock. And, um, and I saw it sort of gapping up. And I saw it sort of pull back. So right around here, so let me let me do it. Let me do this. It, I, I took a very small position on this. It wasn't wasn't a big position. Oh, sorry guys. So you see how it, it gaps up? Let me zoom in a little more. But you see it, it, it pulls back. That made me say, oh, this thing is gonna this thing is gonna this thing is gonna collapse. And so I took a very small position, just just 500 shares, but I got in right around I think it was like 1355, and this thing, as you see, this thing came all the way down, all right, and it just completely collapsed, all right. So you know, so I, I made a nice profit here, and I covered, and I want to say I covered somewhere, somewhere right when it broke above you guys. It was like 1320, I think it was where I covered. So, you know, nice quick little trade, all right? So I love shorting, but I, I had two dip buys and one short today, um, you know, and, um, and you know, and, and shorting to me is the way to go. What the, the, big, the big short that I missed was AKS, which was, I mean, what a tremendous opportunity to short and make a killing. But, you know, but at least I made some money dip buying it. So I had two dip buys and one short at the end. I mean, generally, I would like to short something with a lot more volume, but, but it was okay. It was a fine. It was a good trade. I made a little bit of money on it. All right? So with that said, let's build the watch list for tomorrow. So this is what I usually do. I look for stocks between $0.20 cents and $30 to trade. You can make your criteria with however you want. Uh, my volume, I usually look for stocks with 500,000 shares that are 5%. In scan, we got 39 plays. So not a lot of stocks. You know, some days I get 100, some days I get 50. This is one a lower. Uh, percentage. So with that said, I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to create watch list and I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put this one date 52517 and I'm going to go to charts. And this is it, this scanner. And actually this scanner is where I find the majority of my plays to be honest with you. But I'm not looking at my watch list. So let's look at the biggest plays. I saw GBLS running today, but I had no idea that it was going to run like this and honestly if you watch my videos you know right here would have been a good entry point like on the five minute because you know it was moving slowly all day long um you know this would have been a great entry right here um right when it broke above vwap and the 13 year may risking vwap as your as your stock and you could have stood this all day because this thing on the five minute chart it never broke below the 13 year may except for here i mean you could have took this and rolled this bad boy all day I had no idea that this stock was going to do this. Now, tomorrow, this thing is going to be a good short. This is going to pull back hard. So if you can find shares to short, look to short this tomorrow. I'm definitely, I don't, think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to trade small, but uh, this is going to be a great opportunity. You know, and on the one minute, it's hard to get a sense, right, of how to get in this stock because it's kind of choppy. So th that's why sometimes the one minute time frame may not work. And uh, on the five minute, you get a cleaner entry. And look, pull, gap up, bull flag. So right when it touches, this is your entry. Gap up. Pull back. Right here is your entry. Gap up. Pull back. This is your entry. It just kept gapping up and then it's sort of what Usually you get two. This you got three and then a push and then sort of a watch, but it bounced off the 13 EMA and just kept going and going and going. And look, you see how this is another flat pattern right here. So if you notice, this is a flat, flat top. This is a quarter of flat top flag pattern. And then it just gapped up. And then look, another flag pattern. So each flag pattern. This is just people taking profit, and then you see, boy, look, there's not a lot of selling pressure. It's just buying. See all the volume bars, all green? You know, people are just buying, 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 and the stock just kept going up. So this is absolutely the number one play I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. Short sale is going to be looking to drive this bad boy down, and it had a lot of volume. All right? Uh, ADPTQ. So these, this, is, this stock is a pump that's being manipulated. If you can find shares to short, get ready to pump because this thing is going to crash. Now, when? I don't know. 
you would have to look at the yearly to get a sense of what it's done previously. So, you know, this is a stock that, you know, it went from $1 to $23. Oh, that's GBLS, I'm sorry. Uh, APTQ, yeah, this is some dog shit crap, you know, that's just being pumped. And, you know, it's gone, it's just been, this stock was at like 46 cents a few days ago. And, uh, you know, a week ago, and now it's gapping up. And, you know, its next resistance point is 150 and then you have 196 and you know this stock has been as high as three dollars before the crash and look at what happened when it hit 374 look what happened this thing crashed all the way to 20 cents within one two three four five days that's going to happen again it's just a pump that they just keep you know pumping but um you know tomorrow it might continue to go up i'll put it i'll leave it on the watch list but be very weary if you you know buy shares of this dog shit. you know it's, it doesn't have any value it's a pump all right it's a pump it's clearly a pump and it has a Q. it's a bankrupt company any stock with a Q at the end is bankrupt next up tcs tcs is a stock that gapped up and you know i had a nice little nice little move and then it kind of came back down and it's kind of consolidated the stock was four dollars i mean it looks like it's for it looks like it's found its support here like the 560 level um i don't know what it's the container store which is a pretty good company i don't i don't know what where Look how overextended this thing is. I mean, it's ridiculous. So my expectation that it's going to be a great short and it's traded 9 million shares. So for just for that alone, I'll put it on the watch list. All right. Because you can see, you know, you might get an opportunity to short this stock because it's so overextended. You know, what you want to do is you want to, you know, put a little trend line and get a sense. All right. It seems that this seems to be its support level. It's forming higher lows, you know, and it's continuing up. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. SGH, nope, dog shit, I know. Uh, I know, yeah, this was a stock that I think some of the people in the group traded based on my strategy. Congrats to anybody who shorted this. This thing, sometimes when you see a stock go parabolic like this in pre market, don't expect it to just keep going. You see how it uh, at $12 it reversed because $12 is a psychological resistance point. So, what you should be doing is you see how here it's this is the low pre market, and then you should put, be putting a trend line at the high pre market. So that you know, you know, what, what, your, what the range is, you know. And, you know, this stock com completely collapsed pre-market and it opened and it continued to collapse. But look what happened. It found its support level at around this 860 level. So, yeah, let me just, um, it found its support here and you could have dip bought it here, you know. And look, it just starts forming higher lows and it, it kind of ripped back up, you know. So remember, you know. You don't know how long it's going to go because look, it, it, it goes up to about 920 and then it crashes back down, bouncing off its previous support level and then it kind of took, went for another one. You got to be careful. That's why you should take your profit. You know, don't go crazy, you know, um, you know, holding this, you know, like, you know, you got to take profit along the way, especially if you sized in heavy. All right. Um, but, you know, it presented a dip buy opportunity. Um, you know, this is dog shit. This is going to come all the way back down. Um, I'm going to put it on the watch list just because it had such a crazy rip and maybe tomorrow, sometimes when you have this, these rips like this, it had to be, what was it, uh, I'm trying, I'm, I don't even know what caused it to move, um, what happened, um, uh, nice spiking, um, uh, spiking, high value, Wall Street had fed, share so pre-market, oh, study results, HIV vaccinations were drove it up, that's what it was. Sometimes when you have these, they have multiple runs at the open. So maybe tomorrow it spikes again. We'll see. All right. So let's keep moving. NG, NETS, the net. Now, this is a stock that I love. Look at this. This thing went crazy. No volume, though. Now, that's the only thing that sucks. But look at this. What do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Tomorrow, this thing is going to have a short. You're going to be able to short this at the open. It's going to pull back for sure. But it had no volume. But other traders may see this stock and they say, you know what, I'm going to put on my watch list too. Even though it wasn't liquid, they may they may want to jump in. So, you know, we'll see. Next up, MNGA, uh, you know, ripped up to 258. Is, that's why I love these spikes because you watch the stock go and you see look, it gaps up, pulls back. So look, you had the gap up, you had the first bull flag, gap up, pull back. Yeah, but you had another one in the last push and reversal. You usually get two in a reversal, but this time you got three in a reversal. And then it washed, you know? And then right here is where you could have took it short. So when it formed that lower high right here, right here, risking the higher day, if you had watched this, and you could have took this short and just rolled this all the way down. Um, I'm not going to put it on my watch list. MARA, same thing here. Look, parabolic spike. So 
This you definitely watch on the one minute. You watching it up, gap up, pull back. So both like gap up, pull back. That, that's the second one. Last push. You see the wick, the incision wick, and you know right here, right here, kind of forms this double top. You know, so right here you see that it, it gaps down, bounces off the nine, forms the lower high. Right here is where you take it short, and you know you could have took took this short and made a killing. The shorting the spike. That's what I prefer to do. You know, let's take this watch all day. Uh, I'm not gonna put it on the watch list. Uh, NBCR, NBCR is the stock that I took short. Um, am I gonna? You know, this probably presents another short tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> um, am I going to? Eh, I'm not gonna put it on the watch list. TLYS, no RADA, no CDSI, no HDPI. Yeah, this is a stock that. Look at this, nice move. You know, right here is the high of day. And that's what drove it up. High day breakout pops up on everybody's scanners, and then you see people take it up. Gaps up, pull back, this is your entry. Gaps up, pull back, this is your entry. And it just never broke the 20 EMA, so we'll put it on there. HDP. Okay, um, next up, uh, where am I? MULE. Nice move. Uh, you know, not super liquid, but yeah, it's up. What do I think is going to happen? It's going to be a short sale. So he's going to say, well, Omar, I only have $5,000 in my account. So that's good. Then you can buy, you can at least get 100 shares, you know, and, um, you know, because what, 100 shares is what, $2,500? So, yeah, and you take this down. I mean, look at the move. I mean, these stocks go up and down. You can make a quick 100 bucks shorting it. All right, same thing, AZ. No, no, you see, that's what sucks. These things don't have volume, but, man, I mean, but shit, look at the move. The move is crazy, you know? So, normally I wouldn't put stocks like these on the, on the watch list, but because the watch list is small, you know, what do you, you don't lose anything but put on the watches. Doesn't mean you need to trade it, all right? And look at uh, MBRX, another dog shit company that's, you know, doesn't have no volume, but it keeps going up. Um, I'm not gonna put it on the watches. EBR, EBR, not too liquid, um, but it had its nice move, all right? Went from four to 440, bounced off VWAP. Um, so do I put on the watch list? Nah, let's go WTP, no. GOL, it's a stock that I've traded in the past. Gold moves. On news, it definitely moves. Uh, not super liquid though, but I'll put it on the watch list because I, I traded this before and I know it when, when the attention starts coming in, it, it can absolutely run. Um, NTKR, NTKR had a, a tremendous move. I've traded this in the past. You know, this was $18 five days ago, it's at $21. What do I think is going to happen tomorrow at the open? This thing is going to pull back and you're going to have a nice short opportunity. Doesn't mean that it's not going to continue up. It's just going to present a nice shorting opportunity at the open. Um, let's keep going. So, GLYC, you see the stock is, you know, I mean, you don't know what to trade. I mean, look how choppy this is. I, 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 I stood away from this because I don't know what. You know, I don't know what the, what's going to happen with this. I mean, theoretically, yeah, I could have shorted it here, the lower high, you know, using my strategy with the lower high, and then, you know, kind of comes down, forms this lower high. You know, you could have took another entry here and took it down. But, I don't know, it's just so choppy that I'm staying away from it. Um, you know, I'm going to put on the watch list just because, you know, so many people are playing it. But if it doesn't present a clear entry, I'm not trading it. Um, and it was very liquid. ANF, ANF had a you know crazy rip all the way up to 1359. And look at watch bounced off VWAP. So that's one of my plays, right? That I put in that um, um, manual. The VWAP bounce, you know, uh, sort of look at 119 p.m. Just like I talked about, usually from where between like 12 and on, you know, you get these afternoon bounces off VWAP where you can take a trade, and uh, you know, kind of gapped up, you know, bounced off VWAP because VWAP plays. So access support came up to 1333 and watched them. Look at this shit. People will bag holding the bag. And they're like, ah. You know, so what do I think is going to happen with this stock? Let's see. So it had 11 million shares. I think that tomorrow, if we look at the five day chart, look where it start, start stock normally trades at $11.92. Currently, it's 1290. What is it? Oops. Currently, is what? 1289.35. So what do I think is going to happen? You're gonna have a beautiful short opportunity tomorrow on it. All right, next up, NGR. NGR, look at this move. Uh, Seven million shares. This thing just ripped all day. NR, yep, NRG. I'm sorry. We'll put that on the watch list. 
Um, where am I? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. But I felt like doing this for you guys. Um, ADX, ADXS. So yeah, look at this beautiful. Not, you know, head and shoulders where you can just short into. Um, no volume though. Um, it is holding its support though. So it's one of these higher lows now. Um, I'm not gonna put on the watch list. HGR, HGR, look at this. Move, 4 million shares traded. Yeah, you know, gapped up. This thing went from 18 to 1866. Its previous was uh, 17, seems support to be 1769. So if it bounces, if it washes and, and, and dips down to 1759, you can take a trade on it. Maybe it goes back up. All right, that's why it's good to know where the previous support and resistance levels are. It's very, very important. Um, PLX, no. STY, BB, no. CMMT, and nah. CC, nah. I don't like it. DEPO, Depot, 1.8 million shares. I mean, this thing did have a nice grip, but it's, you know, it's very hard to get a sense of what the stock is going to do. Uh, if you look at it over the last five days, oops, sorry guys. 987, nah. Um, I mean, it has room to go. I mean, you could, I think it has a move to at least 1091. Nah, I'm not gonna put on my watch list. Uh, TC, TKC, nah, no volume. IPAS, no PYN, nah. All right, so you know, short, small watch list. Um, you know what I do sometimes? I look at stocks that go below the my um, you know, five percent criteria to see like look SPW. SPWR, you know, had this nice move at the close and it had three million shares. You know what? It held it held its high. I'll put on the watch list. Uh TRQ, no PDG, UEG, look at this, nice move. Lick held the ties into the close. I'll put on the watch list for you guys. Alright, and we have CLDR, kind of move too. I'm not gonna put on the watch list, but this move. PDI. PEI had a nice move and it had liquid and it's liquid 11 to 11.80. So here we go. PEI and uh, KTOS had a nice move from 10. So you see, these stocks didn't didn't appear on my scanner because they they fall be, they fall below the five percent criteria that I have. So I have this new high scanner and I sometimes when I when I want to look to see for more plays and look at more charts, I'll just look at some of the other scanners to find plays. That's basically what I'm doing. And um, so this is a good good base. And you know, I can continue looking look at some of these other charts if I want to go crazy. But you know, there's enough plays. And that's what you have scanners for to find plays. Unless you, in the event you don't want to play your watch list. So um, you know, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, folks. Have a great evening.